Uh, good morning. First, uh, I want to introduce myself a little bit, and then I want to talk about Linux and education, our workshop for this session. All right? Uh, first of all, my name is uh, Dr. Mohammed Kalash. Uh, I'm holder of many certifications, some of the universities, like a PhD in management of information technology, and some of lots of other com companies like Cisco, uh, LPI for Linux, and Microsoft, and so on. And today's session, we're going to talk about Linux in education, all right? Uh, after I finish, if you have any questions, we can have a QIA uh, session and you can ask whatever you want. All right? First of all, closed source or open source? This is our question for today. What should we use with our children in schools? In today's competitive world, it is the answer to that question that allows business leaders in all levels to compete and even countries to compete. It starts from grade 10, as we see it. Should you buy a toy car to your child, closed source, or should you buy to your child a Lego toy and guide him to build his own Lego-based toy car? This is open source. Linux and open source applications are important to the industry because of three main factors. Performance of the Linux systems and its applications, stability, and low total cost of ownership. But to use Linux in the industry, it means we need to prepare our young ones to embrace it and use it. This is why we are focusing today on the young ones, our, our children, in grades 10, 11, and 12. We are shifting the mindset of our young children in their school's computer course from using a pre-built application, closed source, to learning concepts about how systems and application work and lead them to build in the future their own systems and applications. And this is, again, open source. And our agenda, there are three topics inside of it. First, we will talk about how the education of Linux OS evolved. Then we will talk about the roadmap to Linux education and after that, we will explain some lessons learned during our implementation inside some of the schools that we implemented in. So first, the case for Linux in education. In teaching anything, and especially the Linux OS and open source, there are two sets of skills that we are trying to enhance in our grade 10 students. The mechanical skills and the cognitive skills. Whereas the mechanical skills are related to the act of memorizing and solving stops, stuff, in addition to doing physical tasks in which the highest performance is rewarded, the cognitive skills, which should be learned in early childhood, are aimed uh, uh, are aimed to help a child to better interact with the outside world when he grows up and are rarely looked at by some education communities and thus rarely rewarded. Some studies showed even for those cognitive skills that poorer performance should be rewarded more than higher performance. And yes, this is against the belief to what most of us know through economics. Some say it is a conspiracy, but really institutions like MIT and University of Chicago and lots of others said so. In both ways, it is a reward spur performance structure, the same structure used with workers and employees and the rewards or incentives and the old visions were always money or salary. 
In our Linux and open source vision, we think of it in a different way. As long as we ensure that every person will have enough money to pay his bills, he will be satisfied and his performance will increase depending on three factors, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Autonomy is to be self-directed, and this is not engagement, which is being directed by others, by a manager, for example. Mastery is the urge to get better in doing stuff. So if you allow your staff to show their inside by not standing in their way, and if they reach mastery in what they are doing, what will you get? Of course, something like the Linux operating system or the Wikipedia or maybe something even better. And hence, we reach the third factor, the purpose, which if combined with autonomy and mastery, we get even better and better stuff, Skype, Facebook, Twitter, and others. Here are some student testimonials, and especially I want you to read the last one from schools that we already implemented Linux education in. And if you read the last one, I want to quote from it the words, desire to serve people. And that is the ultimate purpose we are aiming at. How did we pave our way into Linux education, into implementing it at schools? This is our roadmap. The five steps for the roadmap are to plan the knowledge, the curriculum, the content, and the labs. Lots of schools joined our Linux education program for grades 10, 11, and 12, where we helped them into all phases including the planning phase and the sub-phases inside the planning phase. We carefully communicated our knowledge about the program and set up for them different roles and prepared them for these roles. Those schools had to throw out their old computer course and implement the new Linux education program. Some twists were made to carefully meet the school's curriculum and the Linux industry needs. Some projects were implemented, similar to Raspberry Pi, and students understood better how Android, Facebook, YouTube, and other systems work. Some schools even developed their own content, and some implemented some existing contents. Improvements were made to both custom-made and existing material, depending on the outcomes from our students. It was easy to do lab implementations, even on existing older systems, and some schools used Raspberry Pi networks were built by those students using those Raspberry Pi's. Schools, after one year of implementation, they started to notice changes among students, parents, and staff embracing Linux and open source as being the future for our kids. Yet, not everything worked right from the first time when we implemented inside schools. We had to do some twists in those schools depending on their special needs for the Linux education program to succeed with them. But at the end, everyone is a winner when we embrace open source. What is the baseline program that we used in schools? It's the Linux Essentials. This is a course that teaches you how to use Linux, how Linux works, how open source systems work, and so on. These are the outcomes we had in the year 2014-2015. And as you can see, we started with Linux Essentials in grade 10, but in grade 11 and 12, we pushed it a little further 
with open source curricula. Our mission is to provide a global framework, industry leadership, and services to enhance, develop, and further lifelong professional careers in Linux and open source technologies. Our vision is to become recognized as the number one organization that provides global leadership, direction, and skill standards for those who pursue a career in Linux and open source technologies. Our purpose is to build and maintain a professional skill standard that is supported and upheld throughout the world. So what we do is to improve your ability as an employment candidate to perform in today's changing market through training with our partners. Here is a map that shows what we are, where we are already, and you can connect to us either using Twitter or Facebook or even our website at lpi.org. Now, I'm ready for questions, so whatever you need, ask me. And if you want to introduce yourself, I'm ready. I have some business cards if you want them, and I need to get your business cards if you are related to some schools. All right? Any questions? Yes. Welcome. Uh, what we are focusing, what we are focusing mostly, is uh, about the grade 10, 11, and 12. Uh, we can start from earlier even, but this is our main focus because uh, most of the curriculum related to Linux Basic Essentials uh, course is related to those people that are starting to use computers and that are being able to understand what we are explaining and the open source technology and so on. But you can start, there are some softwares that you can use even with uh, uh, smaller kids starting in uh, kindergartens and so on. Uh, I heard there is a software that you use, uh, which is an open source software that allows them to draw some pictures using uh, a keyboard or a mouse without having to know a lot about drawing and about the softwares and so on. So you can use such software. But we have initiatives later for them. Other questions? OK, I want to thank you very much for being in here. And I want to get to know you better. So if you want to introduce myself, I'm ready. And if you need any question on private, I'm ready also. All right? Thank you very much. You, you mean your question is why using Linux and not Windows, right? This is your specific question. I'll talk a little bit out of the topic. Uh, if you want to go to work and you are a network administrator or a systems administrator and you have an IT department that you want to work at, 
uh, you have to work with servers. Servers mostly are either Linux-based or Unix-based or Microsoft Windows-based. This is the three of them. Linux or Unix are a little bit the same. Uh, if you work with the server based on Linux, it needs very low resources to work. Uh, you can have 256 megabytes of RAM. Do you know a computer that has 256 megabytes of RAM nowadays? A, a, a quarter of uh, a gigabyte? You don't have a quarter of a gigabyte, but still Linux can work with a server uh, with uh, a quarter of a gigabyte RAM. A Linux can work on a hard disk that is only 40 megabyte or 50 megabyte. It does not need a lot of space in order to be inside the computer. Uh, it can work with very old systems. Uh, I have uh, back at my home even a very small PC that is uh, that big, a stick like the USB drive, and it has a Linux operating system inside of it. Uh, if you want to use other operating systems, you have to have lots of memory, uh, RAM, hard disk, uh, very new equipments, uh, big computers, in order for them to work as servers. So it's better to implement Linux inside companies because it gives you more performance, more power, but you don't have to pay a lot for hardware. You can uh, get your old systems and work with them in Linux in the newest versions of Linux and they will work. Uh, but in order to implement that in companies, uh, for the companies to succeed in Linux, uh, we have all to know about Linux. If we don't know about Linux, they will not implement it inside the companies. So as users, we have to know about Linux first. Then inside companies, they will implement it. But if we only know about other operating systems, yeah. they cannot implement Linux. You see? Further to talk about it, Linux is easier to use than other operating systems. You think this is not the right case. I know my operating system and I can use it. It's easy for me to use. But I ask you a question. If I want to defragment, do you know what defragment means? If I want to defragment my hard disk in other operating systems, I will not name them, because you know where it can be, you know how to reach the defragmentation in the other operating system. Maybe you know it, but, but others don't, you see? So even though the other operating system is a graphical interface, but not everyone knows everything about it. Being a graphical interface does not mean it's easy to use. Being a graphical interface means you can click instead of typing a command only. So Linux is also a graphical interface. And since you learned the other operating system and you learned where the tools are inside of it, you can learn inside Linux where the other operating system, the other commands are and the tools are. So it's easy to learn it since you already know another operating system there are the same tools inside Linux and you can find them. You can learn about them. And this is the uh, Linux basic essentials course is. It teaches you about the tools that are found inside the Linux systems. So you can use Linux as much as you are using the other operating systems. The same way you use the other operating systems. But with more performance, more power, and even a smaller posture, which means it can take less space and it can work with you. Yeah, very light. And even you can, you can have uh, more software for free because it's open source. Do you know about Ubuntu? Ubuntu is a Linux operating system. If you install Ubuntu inside your computer, uh, you can, like the Android, there is a market store inside Ubuntu. And you can go in and you can install any software from inside the market for free. And you have 
thousands of software. Uh, the office is for free, uh, graphical, uh, uh, to draw graphs and so on is for free, like Photoshop. There are programs like Photoshop you can draw for free. You have lots of software inside the Linux and they are all for free. And what Ubuntu does, they gather them into their own servers and they allow you to go into the market from their Ubuntu system and you can choose whatever software you want to install. You don't have to search for it. You see? Uh, there is a software that I want you to test, uh, the Linux Mint, Mint, M-I-N-T. The Linux Mint, they have the same graphical interface as the other operating system. So if you install it, you'll feel like as if you are inside the other operating system. The same tools, the same places, but some names are a little bit different. You see? But lots of people use Ubuntu because it allows you directly to install other softwares instead of searching for them. All right? Any other question? Uh, the security. This is one of the main reasons why we use Linux. Uh, everyone who wants to attack something will attack the other operating system. The reason for attacking the other operating system is they don't allow you to install the software for free. So they attack it to install the software that they need. If I want to install, for example, Photoshop, and uh, I have to buy a license, and the license costs too much for me, then a hacker might try to crack this software to install it for free. And this is done in lots of countries. But if I have this software for free, do I attack it? No, I will not attack it. So most of the attacks are done on the other operating systems, on the uh, closed source softwares, like the other operating systems, like Photoshop, like AutoCAD, and so on, because they are closed source. But no one attacks something that is given to him for free. You see? And hence, you don't have viruses in Linux. You, you don't see viruses in Linux because no one attacks Linux. If you are giving something for free, why do you need to attack it? So it's more secure. And even with that, you can configure security features in Linux systems. They are more powerful from the other softwares. So if you have Linux servers inside a company, for example, you can configure security for that company because some people might attack their data on, their, on these servers. Uh, so you can configure security for those servers depending on Linux. Even the security is more powerful than any other operating system in place. You see? Uh, do you know routers and switches from Cisco? Did you hear about Cisco? Do you know that Cisco builds devices that are used to connect the internet and the internal networks together? Do you know that the operating system of Cisco, which is called the IOS, Internet Work Operating System, is based on Unix? So in the old days, they took Unix and they changed it and they made the operating system of Cisco. Did you hear about... Uh, uh, Macintosh, some of you are using uh, laptops from uh, Apple, Macintosh, and some of you are using even the iPhone, right? Uh, it has uh, the iOS, Internet Work Operating System. It has lots of performance. It's very powerful. It works on the hardware and it does not blink. Uh, you don't have any problems with it, right? Do you know that it is based on Debian Linux? It's a Linux-based operating system, but they changed it in order to make it closed source. So it's Linux system. Changed. Do you have a Nokia cellular, Nokia mobile phone from the old days that contained uh, the uh, Symbian, oper uh, the, uh, what did they call it, Nokia? Symbian, I think. It was the old operating system before the Microsoft bought it. The Symbian is a Linux-based operating system that was used on 
Nokia mobiles in the old days. So it's Linux. You see? Yeah, yeah. Backtrack is a Linux operating system. And the Backtrack company, what they did is they gathered all hacking tools inside this Linux operating system. So if you want to hack someone, you download Backtrack and you use the tools inside of it. And you can use those tools to hack others. Because most of the hacking tools were built inside the Linux systems. So what they did is they gathered those tools inside the Backtrack software. And now they call it the Kali, the new one. Any other questions? Do you know that Android is also a Linux operating system? But it's a, it's a little bit closed because they don't want you to install everything for free. So install some software for free, some software for money. But it's a Linux operating system. Do you know that uh, you have a car, right? And you, your car has some parts of it that are automated, right? Some parts of the car are automated. Do you know that the automation depends on a card installed, an electronic card installed inside the car, and it has the Linux operating system inside of it? It has Linux. But a very small software of Linux that controls only what the car needs. So everything is based on Linux. All right? Any other question? Okay, I want to thank you very much for being in here. And if you have any question in private, I'm ready. All right? <laughs>